Before we can track down any noise source, we need to prepare the tools that will help us. One of the key tools to have for tracking down interference is a simple coax loop antenna connected to a portable receiver. Over the next five minutes, we'll be showing how to build one of these antennas from basic parts. We need a short section of RG8 or RG213 coax, a couple of Peel 259 plugs, a T-piece adapter, some heat shrink tubing, and a few hand tools to put it all together. We need 900 millimeters of this cable marked off in two 450 millimeter sections so that we get to mark where the center of the cable is. For our purposes, the cable doesn't need to be new. A section of old scrap coax cable would be fine. Slide the small section of heat shrink tubing onto the cable now, as it has to be in place before the connectors are screwed on. Using the length of a Peel 259 plug as a reference, cut away the outer protective sheath. Now we can bunch the copper braid back onto itself and trim back the excess braid. This leaves the end of the centre core exposed. We must remove about 20 millimeters of this center core insulation, but the nylon material can be very tough to cut even with a sharp knife. Sometimes it's better to remove it in small sections as we don't want to break the center conductor strands as the insulation is cut away. Next, separate the two halves of the Peel 259 plug. Slide the outer part of the plug over the cable first. Then the rest of the connector can be screwed on firmly to the thick braided copper. The tip of the connector must be soldered, leaving no protruding bumps on the center pin. The outer part of the connector can then be restored. Now we must find the centre of the cable where it was previously marked and measure about 10mm either side of this spot. With a knife, score around these two marks and carefully remove the outer sheath of this 20mm section. With a good pair of side cutters, cut away the copper sheath inside the exposed area, ensuring that there are no loose strands left behind. When this centre core has been completely exposed, it's time to seal this area with a heat shrink tubing using a hot air gun or radiant heat source. We move on to the second Peel 259 connector, as before sliding the outer part onto the cable first. Then trim away the sheath and the braid as before. An important difference with this end is that the centre conductor is not terminated. We are just going to cut it off. Then we can screw on the rest of the plug. With a pen or even coloured tape, mark this end of the cable. Now we are clear to form the loop onto the T-connector and the antenna is complete. 
with the receiver connected to the center of the T, we have created a non-resonant balanced loop that will produce a decisive null in the interference signal when it is held 90 degrees to the noise source. For the best results, the receiver should allow the operator to listen to the bottom half of the HF band using an AM receive mode. Somewhere around 10 MHz is usually fine. This tool will greatly simplify the process of identifying the location of any wideband interference. Well, that's all for today. In the next video, we'll be showing how to use this antenna to find a variety of interfering noise sources.